Now that we have the counter method in the repository to track right versus unread, let's focus on this aspect of our application that we haven't touched so far, right? When is a message read? When is it, how far along does it stay unread? And also some kind of a representation in the UI about an unread message versus a read message, right? Something that's unread will probably be bolder and something that's read would be not. And also, what are the things that causes these counters to be incremented and decremented? So let's figure that out. Now, when I, um, let's start with sending a message, right? So we have the email service, which sends a message. And we know that when some message is sent to somebody, it stays unread, okay? So here, when I'm putting something to somebody's inbox, it says it stays unread, right? Unread is such a true. But when I'm setting something in their own uh, sent items, unread should be false which I realize is a bug over here. I'm setting under it to true even over here. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to set send items entry dot set hundred to false, right? Somebody sending something, they, the email goes to their sent items and it should stay red because they wrote it, right? So that's going to have uh, under it set to false. But these are the two conditions. Now, when I send something to somebody, their counter for unread for that folder needs to increment, right? I'm sending this to, uh, you know, this is a create list item. I'm sending this to someone. I'm attaching an email to the inbox for this particular user, which means that that particular user's inbox counter needs to increment by one. Okay, so let's actually do that now. I'm going to create this auto wire repository, which is the 100 email stats repository. Okay. And when somebody is getting something in their inbox, I'm going to set the 100 email stats to increment. Okay. So I've created a new item over here in their inbox, and then I'm going to do 100 email stats repository dot increment 100 count for this user who is the owner here the owner is the person who we are sending it to okay which is this guy and uh this is 2id okay and we have to do this for each and every person right uh and then the label is going to be inbox okay okay so for this user and for this folder i am incrementing the count. Okay. Now with this, the send email part is covered, right? When I send an email, not only is this email going to all the people that it's targeted to, their corresponding inbox folder counts are also being incremented as a result of this. Okay. Now the next part is when somebody is reading a message. Okay. Where is that happening? That's happening in the email controller, email view controller. Okay, so this is where a message is being read. When a message is being read, the well, first thing we need to do is mark that message is read because we are not doing that right now. Okay, so what are we doing here? We are getting the folder repository, getting all the folders. Here is where we're getting the email, right? Now, the challenge is the email is doesn't have the read uh, status. Okay, so email dot What's it called? Okay, here is email, right? Email dot set. Well, there's no counter here, right? There is no uh, red status here, rather. I'm not tracking whether an email is read or not in the email model. What I'm tracking is in the email listing page model, right? So I need to go here. Email list item. This is what's tracking whether a message is read or not. Okay. So this is going to make it a little tricky. So I'm reading an email. I don't know which folder this email existed on which the user clicked and they saw this email. Okay. This, they could have seen this email from their sent items. They could have seen this email from their uh, inbox folder. We don't know that. So what we need to do is when we are showing the email, we need to figure out which uh, folder they came from. Okay, and they have to come from a folder. We don't want to have like uh, permalinks to these emails. We want people to click on, a, you know, a list item only then they see the email. Right? They can't hotlink emails like this. So 
we need to pass that in as an argument. Okay, so let's table that for now. Let's at least make sure that when somebody sends an email, the number is incrementing. We will tackle the decrement later because there is, that's a little bit trickier. Now, when somebody sends an email, I am already uh, incrementing the count by one. Now, I'm going to replace the inbox app hard coding over here. You see this? I'm doing all this hard coding to use the email service because we have this nice email service which sends out emails. So why not just call that instead of doing all this stuff? Because this is all being handled by that email service, right? So I'm going to uh, remove these things and I'm basically going to just inject the email service. Okay, and I don't need, uh, I don't need this and I don't need this. And over here, I'm going to loop I equal zero to 10. I'm going to say email service dot send email. Okay, who's the from? The from is going to be my ID. Two is going to be raised as list. I'm going to give two IDs here, right? I'm going to say my ID. And then uh, maybe one more ABC. That doesn't exist, but that's fine. The subject is going to be hello plus I. And then the body is going to be body. It's fine, really, it doesn't matter. But now what I'm done, what I'm doing here is by not hard coding the individual pieces, but by basically sending the email like the actual functionality would work, I am doing effective hard coding and making sure all of the other functionalities that are involved in sending an email are all being taken care of over here. So I'm basically sending these 10 emails. And now that I load the app, it should send those 10 emails when the application starts up. All right, I'm going to reload, do the login, and uh, you see there are 10 emails being sent. And uh, now if you look at the database, there should be that many 100 emails. So it's happening, right? So this ID gets 10 emails, and this ID has 10 emails. And these emails are in the sent items, but those don't have uh, the counter here because we're not measuring, we're not uh, tracking an unread email when something is in the sent items. Okay, so this is great. Now, what we're going to do next is to bring these counters in to over here. Right now, this is hard coded. I want to fetch those counters when I'm displaying the folders. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do next. Where do I do that? I do that in the uh, I think I have to do this in every controller, right? So I'm going to go to the inbox controller and uh, here I'm going to reference the unread email stats repository. The unread email stats repository will have a find all by ID method. I'm going to get on off the stats for this particular user. Okay. So just like I'm getting all off the folders, I'm going to get all of the stats for this, for this user. Okay. I'm going to say un read email stats repository dot find all by user and what I'm going to get back is unread email stats and I'm going to call this stats now that I have the stats I need to somehow show it to the display in the display okay so I'm going to have to set this in the model one thing I can do is just set this in the model directly okay and I'll do this stats and then I can look it up from there but what I'd like to do is I'd like to have a better way of looking it up and thinking something like a map what would be ideal 
is to have a folder name to the unread count as a map, right? The key is going to be the folder name and the value is going to be the unread count. That's going to make it really easy for me to display this in the folder list component, right? So what I have here is 14. I can basically look up the, the count for this particular label and then just display that. That would be easy, right? So that's what I'm going to do here. Okay, so I'm going to go to the controller again. And over here, instead of putting the stats as is, as a list, I'm going to build this map, okay? So I'm going to say stats.stream, get a stream out of it. And then I'm going to collect this as a, as a map. Collect, and I'm going to use collectors dot to map. Okay. Collectors dot to map takes two lambdas. Okay. It's basically what is the, what is the key that you need and what is the value that you need. All right. And in this particular case, I want the label to be the key and then the count to be the value. All right. So I'm going to get, do this. We need the function expression. So I'm going to say under, under email stats and then, um, get label is going to be the key and then under email stats get the unread count is going to be the value so what this is going to do is it's going to get me a map by mapping this to the label and then the count right uh since i need to do this pretty much everywhere i'm probably going to extract this to a service maybe like a there's already a folder service. I'm probably going to use that. Let me actually do that right away. So I'm going to get this out over here. In folder service, I'm going to create public map of string and string. What we need is a map of, well, it's probably string and integer. What we need is a map of the folder labels to the counts. Okay, so I'm basically going to copy paste the method that we just wrote. Uh, map count to labels. Okay. This is what we need to do. I'm going to get the unread email repository. I'm going to inject that over here. Uh, let me pass in the user ID as an argument. And uh, the responsibility of this method is going to be like fetch the unread stats for this user and then create a map of label to unread count. Okay. I'm going to get this guy from here to over here. Import. And uh, this is basically going to just return this. Okay. We'll break this down so that this is a little easier to read. Okay. So I'm basically doing a map off the label to the unread count and I'm returning it. And now what I need to do here is just get this guy over here. Stats is going to be the folder service dot map count to labels off the user ID. So it has to look this up for a given user ID. Okay. And uh, I'm going to basically put this in uh, all of the controllers because all of the controllers need that left hand panel, right? It has to be there in the model for all of the controllers. So I'm going to go over here, uh, put this in um, the compose controller after creating the folders. Do this do. And in the email view controller, again, after sending all the folders, do this, please. Okay. So I have the stats over here. Now I need to fetch it in my template so that I can display that rather than the hard coded number that I'm displaying. Okay. So I'm going to go to my, uh, well, this is not inbox. This is folder list component HTML file. And uh, here I have the hard coded count. I am going to change this to the uh, the count that I'm going to look up from here. This is going to be dh colon text 
equals, and then the expression. The value is the stats, and this is a map, so I'm going to do a get. And uh, what is the key? The key is folder.label. So I'm going to put that thing in here. Okay. So now I have the value di coming directly, but we are fetching it every time we load, and then we are showing that as the count here, right? So let's test this out. Okay, this seems to be working fine. So there are 10 in inbox. So inbox is repeating. That's the reason why this is happening. Uh, let me actually get rid of the, uh, get rid of this stuff. We don't want this thing. All right. Those are user customized folders. Or maybe I can have it with a different different name. Maybe work home family, perhaps that should be fine. Now when I load the page, inbox will have just one folder and it's gonna show just once. As you saw, it was able to see that 10 over there. Okay. You see that? This is coming up fine. I think it has to do yet another restart from my previous save for this to show up. And there you go. We have the user folders. I'm going to test this out by sending a message to myself. Test counter test. And I'm going to submit. And there you see the value is 11. The count is increased by one. Okay. Now we have done the increment part. Now we need to do the decrement part next. 